Sound everyone. Um, hi, it's Leon, uh, and uh, we're going to look at multiple oscillators today. Um, I was doing some work at uni, and I realised that um, actually doing multiple oscillators isn't the most straightforward thing to do. Although it's not hard, trust me, it's it's fine. Um, but I thought I'd make a tutorial on it, um, so you can have polyphonic uh, or multi multiple voiced synthesizers or sounds, whatever you want to do when you're making reactive audio for a game or um, making weird computer music or whatever you want to do, you're probably going to want more than uh, one voice or one sound. Uh, you're going to want multiple. So here's a way to do it. It might not be the best way. Um, I don't claim to be the best C++ programmer, uh, but nonetheless I'll give you uh, a way I figured would be alright to do it. So, let's begin. Open up the project, uh, get to the source, uh, just change my scheme to that. Cool. Okay, so first things first, of course, include our favourite library. OFX Maxim. Cool. Um, so yeah, there's there's multiple ways that we could uh, go about doing this, um, but I figured. What, so what 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 we're we going to need? Well, we're going to need uh, an oscillator um, for each voice. We're going to need an envelope for that oscillator. Um, we're going to need a frequency for that particular oscillator. Um, and that's about it. You know, obviously you might want to add effects, but I'll let you work out how to do this. This should be a good grounding. Um, yeah. So we sort of you could just make multiple vectors of lots of objects and then run them all the way all through the same loop. But that requires maybe lots of pointers and lots of other fun stuff. So maybe it's easier to encapsulate them all. And uh, I, I'm going to use a struct. Um, if you're not familiar with a struct, I think it originally was defined in C. Um, but it's basically a data type that can um, define gr a group list of variables that can be placed under one name in a block of memory. Um, and this sort of allows you to access lots of things under one pointer or via the declared name. Um, so let's. Uh, what I'll do is I will start. Um, I'll define it above the of that class. So and I'm going to call it key. Call it whatever you want. Notes. Whatever but I'm going to call it key. So what member fields does it need? As I said, it needs a oscillator. Uh, that os. um, it needs a envelope. Uh, and it needs a frequency. Now, do we want to have the frequency encapsulated with it? Maybe we want to vary the frequencies on the fly. Well, I'll let you work out how to do that. That should only take a minor change, but um, for now, I think I will just encapsulate it and initialize the frequency when we build it, the key object. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll include um, a constructor. So I'm going to take the frequency when we build the key. So, like so. Um, so let's set the frequency. Uh, and remember we have to initialize, or at least set, set the attack, decay, stay and release for our envelope. So um, I wish my computer was fast and could also complete it for me, that would be great. Uh, 
Okay. Cool, so an arbitrary um, uh, envelope. And remember, yeah, I'm not going to bother, but if you wanted to have different envelopes for different keys, you could either have define them in your as an argument or a parameter in your constructor, or you could have an update function where the user could change it. You just access the field itself. Um, leave that up to you though. That's that's extra. Um, and so now we need a function when we call it. It's going to return um, a sample of sound. And so I'm going to use, um, I'm going to do inline double um, play. So it's going to return a double. I'll spend inline in a second. Uh, so it needs to return the envelope shaped sound and we looked at that last time and we know that when we define the envelope and run its ADSR function which returns a double and the input is our oscillator which is a continuous noise uh, we'll use sine wave actually as I said before I like square waves Let's, uh, Use that. Is it square? Well, we'll find out. Um, so that needs to be frequency, and there needs to be a trigger. So that's going to be a trigger. Okay, cool. So what 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 does um, inline mean? Um, so it's a compiler directive that um, suggests that it doesn't require that the compiler substitutes into the body of the function um, inline. Sorry, let me say, let me say that again. Um, so it takes it takes the body of the function and wherever it's called, it substitutes this for say the method that's calling it. Um, and it can sort of save overhead of a function call, but that's only if the function is a small one. Um, to be honest, I don't know if this is a good application for it, but I've been looking through the Maxim library, and there seems to be lots of inline functions with one-line functions, so I thought, what the heck, whack it in, and, uh, and uh, yeah. Anyway, so I also thought I'd make a little wrapper to access um, our envelope trigger. Um, we could just access it normally, um, but I thought this is a bit neater. Um, so I put it in. So env.trigger equals one. So when we want the key on, then we'll call on. And when we want it off, we'll do the opposite. Okay, cool. That looks about right to me. So we need everything. We've got everything we need to make sound. Um, so let's. What else do we need to declare? We need to make our audio out thread, of course. That takes float buffer. Uh, it takes buffer size and it takes number of channels to select it. Okay. Um, we need to 
declare our buffer size, so that's global, as well as our sample rate. Well, we don't necessarily, we could obviously just um, rewrite that in the right places, but for clarity, know what's going where. That in there. Um, so, as for, we need a double value for the current sample. Well, I'll call it a frame this time, because really we're just getting frames from the buffer. Um, so I'll call it that. Uh, and I want a double array of outputs to route my summed audio into. Because remember, what we're going to do is we're going to, inside, when we loop through the buffer that we're filling in with sound, we're going to, at the same time with a nested loop, we're going to loop through all the sound making devices and sum up the, the values. Um, and then divide that by the amount of sound generators so we don't get a ridiculously loud sound that might blow our speakers or our ears. Um, and then we'll output that summed value um, into the appropriate place in the buffer uh, or flows array. Um, so we need that. Uh, and we will need our mixer to do that for us and finally we need to make a vector of objects. Now there's a few ways you could do it and um, I'm going to be a lazy programmer and I think that's probably the point of learning programming is to automate things to be more lazy, that's the dream so I'm going to not worry with uh, sort of low level proper pointers, I'm just going to use um, smart pointers. Uh, in particular I'm going to use a unique pointer. Uh, and this will basically, um, when, when the struct goes out of scope, it will do all the destructing of the pointer for me so we don't get any um, memory leaks or dangling pointers or any other nasty silly bugs that I'd rather not debug. So, um, how do we do this? We, this is. I think this came in with C plus plus eleven. I was introducing the boost library before that. Um, trialed, I'm not exactly sure, but um, it's a fairly new feature. Uh, yeah. Anyway, vector unique pointer of key objects and it's as simple as that and we'll just call it keys um, and that's everything declared okay cool so next uh, setup sample rate is 44,100 hertz sample uh, sample rate equals 44,100 L. Um, and then we've got buffer size. So that's our buffer, that's 512. So the backgrounds are black because I'm, I'm in, <laughs> of black ground. Um, back ground. Uh, and set up the DAC, switch it on. Sound stream setup. That is two zero. Let's sample rate. Bugger size and buffer size and two. Cool. Uh, and then we need to push um, our key object into uh, our vector or our pointer to a key object. Um, so 
let's just do three keys for now. You can do as many as you want. And I'm going to map them to ASD. Um, I'm doing this on an English keyboard layout, so I'm not quite sure how your keys lay out, but um, ASD is a sort of sequential line for me in the middle of the keyboard. So map it to corresponding keys when you do this. Um, but anyway, so we need to, I'm going to make three uh, objects. So make a loop um, and test is less than three and increment is one and I need to keys dot m place. You could do pushback and then um, you could you could uh, do push back um, and then unique PCR. Uh, uh, what are we making? A, a key, and then you do um, that, that. But all the websites don't ask me why. Uh, Google it for yourself if you're that interested. Tell me to do and place back. Maybe it's optimized. Um, so in place back, push it to the heap. So new key. Um, and it's i plus one. Oh yeah, so I'm going to make a frequency uh, determined on um, the position in the vector. So it's fairly arbitrary, and you could probably think of way way better to assign frequencies. But I'm just going to be lazy, um, and I'm going to do uh, something like I'm going to start at 200 hertz, go to 300 hertz. And then 400 hertz. So I'm going to do basically 1, 2, 3 times 100 plus 100. So I should get uh, the first one will be 200, then 300, then 400. Um, yes, that seems to be right. Cool. Um, so close that, and that is everything for that, I think. Okay, cool. So let's sort out the audio out. In fact let's move let's do the key pressed first. So what we need to do is I need to say if my A key is pressed. So this is listening for key events. And this is the key that's uh, passed so I can use this variable in a conditional. I can say if the key pressed is equal to the character A then do this, whatever's in there. Um, and I want to access my first element of the index, sorry, the first index or element um, in the array. So key zero, or it's keys, sorry. Keys zero dot, ah, but it's a pointer. So I can either do that or I can do dereference it by Say that. Um, however, I like these little arrows because they point. I think that's a good idea. Um, so, key zero point to my function on, and that's just going to trigger the envelope like I, like I showed in the last um, tutorial. At least the one for envelopes. I'm not sure if that's the last one. Um, okay, cool. So and then I just basically rinse and repeat for the other ones, so S and D, 1 and 2, cool. And then I, in key release, which is exactly the opposite, it checks for when a key has been released, if that, then call my um, opposite function off, and that will untrigger the envelope. Gravy. Okay, cool. So that's looking good. Um, let's make our audio uh, stuff. Audio thread, not stuff. A beep on the head from my grandma saying that. Um, Okay. 
copy that. Put that in there. Cool. No, I didn't want that, did I? So let's start at the start. We'll loop through our buffer. Cool. Um, and we will get our current sample and initialize it. Because remember, what all, what was it called? Was it called current sample? No, I called it current frame this time. So, our current frame is going to be summing up all the values. Um, so I need to make sure each time I iterate to the next frame in the buffer, it's set back to zero, so we don't keep summing up extra values on top of it, stacking them up and up and up and up until we get this presumably noise or just really bad, well, it would be a bad sound, I don't know if it would be noise. Um, but so yeah, I just need to initialize that to zero. Um, I then need to loop through every uh, sound maker, sound making device. So int i, we had three, didn't we? So int i was zero. Let's not do i. Let's do j, of course. So j equals zero. j is less than um, keys dot size. and j++ cool and then we want to access our well we want to fill in the current frame with our sound and remember I've wrote a function that returns a double of sound that we can use here so um, and do is sum up current frame plus or equals keys j and then that's pointing to my play function and remember I need to divide it all by um, keys dot size or three aka three Okay, so that's outputting sound into there. So what we're doing is we're iterating each frame over the buffer. It's going one, and then we're filling this current frame up through like that. Then what we're going to need to do after we've got our current frame full of sound from all of our different uh, oscillators is we're going to need to Route that all to the mixer to be outputted. So mix dot um, stereo, and then have the input, which is our current frame, and then our outputs double, double array, and uh, 0.5. Just to mix cleanly through both channels. Not cleanly, that's the wrong word, but equally through both channels. Uh, and then we actually fill in this uh, buffer, so or array. Uh, we need to use the get it in the right index. So output um, i times one of the channels. And basically, this this index thing here that we're doing, and that's it's interleaving. There's a there's an algorithm algorithm running in the background in audio out. Um, and it's interleaving all the buffers. I think we fill up multiple buffers um, uh, or channels, and it um, sort of it sort of uh, works, fits them all in one after the other for us. Not quite sure how the low low level sound works, but um, does something good. Never is. Anyway, we don't need to worry about that because we've got some nice framework to work with. So, output zero, uh, and then rinse and repeat. 
So at this time we add one to do with the right side. Okay, um, and that looks fairly sensible to me. So I'll give this a little run and you can wait for my computer and we'll see where we get to. Sound. Aha, uh -huh. spotted an error straight away. Okay, so that needs to have that. And I'll be off again. Boom! Sound. Okay, so we have life. Let's, um, hopefully, it will work. We'll be able to control our sound with multiple keys. Ooh, so. In its own time. Okay, so I'm going to just stab the A key. Cool. Now I'm going to the S. Now the D. Really not bad actually, I quite like that. Um, cool, so thanks very much for watching. Um, I'll get the code online um, if you guys so you don't have to follow it line by line, although I do encourage you to just copy what I type line by line because that's probably the best way of learning it. Um, and if there's anything that's confused you, if I, anything that I've explained wrong, then just get on Google and uh, find out the right answer. Um, cool, see you next time. Thanks very much for watching.